Alright guys, welcome to another What's in the Night Sky. This month it's April and there's a lot to look forward to. Okay guys, so April for me is the transition from winter night sky into summer night sky. So things like Orion and the winter circle are going to set for another six to seven months. And they're going to be replaced by all the summer night sky wonders, things like the summer triangle and, of course, everyone's favourite, the galactic core of the Milky Way. Firstly though, we're going to look at the planets. So we've got Venus, which is in the west just after sunset, super bright. And Jupiter, at the start of the month, it will rise in the southeast at midnight, but by the end of the month, it will be rising before 10pm. Then we've got Mars and Saturn, which are rising in the southeast just before sunrise, and they will be in front of the Milky Way core, but more on that in a minute. There are a few conjunctions to put in your diaries this month. On the 17th, the crescent moon will be right next to Venus in the west after sunset. And on the 18th, they'll still be pretty close, but not as close as the 17th. Then on the 30th, the full moon will rise right next to Jupiter. That's a really good opportunity for a photograph there. So get the moon bazookas ready. So full moon is on the 30th and new moon is on the 16th. So if you want to go out and photograph the Milky Way, you need to be away from that moonlight. And I think it means that the window for the Milky Way runs from about the 11th to the 24th they are the two weeks where you can get some photographs of the milky way core now the milky way will rise in the southeast and it's best photographed about 4 a.m onwards until twilight sort of kicks in and as i mentioned earlier you've got mars and saturn right in front of the galactic core of the milky way and just off to the right you've got jupiter shining really bright as well do also keep an eye out for the International Space Station this month because there's going to be quite a few passes. And speaking of space stations, the Chinese space station Tiangong-1 is expected to burn up in Earth's atmosphere around the 2nd of April. Probably not going to be visible from the UK, very highly unlikely to be visible from the UK. It's more the southern latitudes, but I'll put a link in the description below so you can track the probability of when it's going to land and it's still not 100% where it's going to land they're not going to be 100% sure until about an hour before it actually happens but I'll put the links below if you want to check that out there's also a meteor shower this month the lyrid meteor shower spans from the 16th to the 25th and the peak of the activity is expected to be the morning of the 22nd maybe the morning of the 23rd but there should be about 15 to 20 meteors per hour as usual Meteor showers are very fickle things and they're quite difficult to predict, so it could be more or less. But the fortunate thing is that the moon sets quite early in the night, so you get to enjoy the meteor shower when it's at its best, which is in the pre-dawn hours. On to the hashtag Wittens. Last month I asked you guys to send me your pictures of the zodiacal light, and again I was quite impressed with the, with the entries. I didn't expect many people to send stuff in because the zodiacal light's not very popular, but you guys were awesome again. These two images, one taken by Georgina Harper and the other one by Colin Tom Jenks, were both taken at Wormshead in Rosilli in Wales. And not long after Colin took this photograph, I actually bumped into him as I was headed out myself to do some astrophotography that night. And this image here by Matt Stansfield love this one and what's even more interesting is that matt didn't even know about the zodiacal light until last month's wittens and this month he's just been smashing out the zodiacal light photos some awesome panoramas do go and check his feed out and finally my favorite this month sent in by Stephen hannah we've got these beautiful blue hues of night and a stunning composition which kind of leads you out to the zodiacal light and I love the similarities between these sort of sharp triangular jagged rocks and the triangular shape of the zodiacal light it really works well I love this image thank you all for sending in your images this month I guess it's not let's do planets I was gonna do Milky Way but I think we'll save that for next month let's do planets there are so many wonderful planets at the moment you've got Venus just after sunset Jupiter pretty much most of the night and then Mars and Saturn in the early morning. 
So this month, I'll be looking for your pictures of planets. Thank you for watching another Wittens. The Dolomites vlog part two is probably the coming weekend, this weekend. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on that. I've also recently picked up uh, the Sony A7 III and I've taken it out um, under the dark skies. So I'll be, I'll be doing a short video very soon about whether this camera has the Star Eater issue and I'll be going into a little bit more in depth towards how it performs in low light. So make sure to hit subscribe if you want to catch that content. Anyway, that is it for this month. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky, I wish you good luck and clear skies.